Well, welcome everybody. Um, welcome to the start, the first Thursday night Zoom chat with our training program for the 2024 Rose Bowl Half Marathon in January, and then the 39th running of the Los Angeles Marathon on March, I believe it's March 17th, if I'm not mistaken. Um, at any rate, I do want to introduce right now um, uh, our coordinator who really does make everything happen here. And I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I don't know why I'm not hearing things, but I'll work on that while Lucy is talking. Uh, everybody, Lucy. Hi, everyone. I know that you can hear me, even though poor David can't. Um, so hopefully he gets it resolved. But um, it's just great to be here. Um, we're really excited for the upcoming season and just really, really um, looking forward to, you know, LA Marathon 2024. Um, I am in the back office, so newsletters, social media, uh, messages, emails, things like that come directly to or from me. So if you ever have a question that's not coaching related, that's membership related, um, you know, that's that's where I come in. So feel free to email me at LARR at McCourtFoundation.org. I'll drop that in the chat. Um, you can also get to that through the website. Um, but that's that's how you get in touch with um, with me if you have any questions. So I'm going to go ahead and pass it back to David. Hopefully by now he can hear me. And if not, I'll just give him a thumbs up. Lucy, was that it? I can't hear a thing. Good. Okay. I'm sorry, you guys. I, I, for some reason, my speakers are not on. I don't know why. At, at any rate, uh, there we go. And uh, I'll spotlight my, so, oh, let's go back to our uh, shared thingy here. Whoops. Our shared screen. And here we go. So I want to welcome everybody. We now have 75 people on our, our Zoom chat tonight. So thank you all for chiming in or, or logging in. Um, this is me, this is my background. You can find all about me online on our LA Marathon website. Um, my, the book I co-wrote and uh, you can, I think still find it in a couple of different places like Amazon and Barnes and Noble or whatever, but what the heck. Anyway, what we wanna talk about tonight is Zoom what? What are we going to do on these Zoom lectures um, each week, each Thursday night, starting at 630? And basically, there are about 20 lectures already online. Right now, I have a long lecture, I believe a 45-minute lecture on the Rose Bowl half and pacing the Rose Bowl half. And I have about a 57-minute lecture broken up into three different lectures on the LA Marathon. That's almost an hour just discussing how to speed up and slow down, how to pace yourself on the LA Marathon and things to think about in terms of race day nutrition and all that. It's already up there. And as we progress throughout the season, we will roll out links week after week to each one of these little videos. So this Thursday night, these Thursday night things, I want to keep it short, and we've had in years past some amazing questions. I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to hear them tonight, which is really weird. Um, I'll hopefully figure that one out before we're done. But I'm going to try and keep these little, little Thursday night things very short and then just answer questions. So if anybody has a personal question like my knee hurts or something like that, please hold off with that till later. But um, on the other hand, if you do have a, a, a question that has to do with training, that's something that everyone can gain from and that we've had some amazing questions in the past. And I want to leave these Thursday night things more open to you guys as individuals. Um, so you can ask your own questions about nutrition or whatever it is. And each week we'll roll out more and more of these lectures that are already up online. You can actually see all of them right now if you go to our YouTube channel, our LA Roadrunner YouTube channel. Just look for our logo there with a navy blue background and you'll find our, our channel. Um, so that's our YouTube lectures. Um, 
Uh, we want to talk basically really briefly tonight about LA Roadrunner, efficient training, yeah. how you find the right group. What is the science involved? Do you just pick a group that looks like they're fun and they, they have a lot of like good muffins and, and food and cake and cookies afterwards? <laughs> well, no. Um, what are we going to do to how do you find the right efficient group that's best for you run as hard as you can and keep up with the group no that's not going to do it so we'll we'll dive into that one um also part of that is taper weeks and switching groups what's the best time to switch groups actually that one i can answer right now um every approximately three weeks it starts with our we have four weeks of build and then we have one week of taper and taper weeks are about 40 to 50 percent less from what we just did uh the week previous so um any one of those taper weeks uh the first one is after four weeks of build the next one is after three weeks of build they slowly get down to after like two weeks of build when we're way up there in volume um but and it depends on the group group zero through four have slightly different schedule from everybody else but basically Every, except for group zero for four everyone has the same saturday saturday schedule the whole week is different, each of those five level one through five schedules, but Saturdays are the same for everyone except group zero through four. And those groups, we give them a little more volume and then we all catch up to them as the season progresses. So um, when you want to change groups, the best time to consider changing a group would be on one of those taper weeks. Taper weeks are all designed, and we'll have this in a lecture later on, to rebuild hormones, rebuild strength. And I won't get into that anymore, but it's a we have a deeper dive, like I say, on that later. But switching groups, you don't want to increase volume and increase intensity, meaning going faster in the same workout, right? So during a taper week, yes, you may be going faster, building in, building increase in, in increase in in speed in intensity, but you're not increasing volume as well. You're actually decreasing volume. So your overall energy output which we can now measure in watts thanks to my coros pacer 2 watch yes that was a cheap plug although we do like i do like this watch a lot it's only uh the new one just came out the coros 3 is only 230 bucks and it's got power output on it which i think is extraordinary um you don't have to buy a 700 dollars watch to get all that stuff but uh enough of my cheap plug um you can, uh, during taper weeks, that's the best time to test the waters on going to a faster group without risking injury from generating too much power output in one particular run. So I do want to cover real briefly before I go back to the science and finding your proper group, I want to talk about LA Marathon corrals. Um, you should know and then after all of this, we're going to open it up, but let me get back to, hang on. And here we go. Corrals. Um, the closed corrals are three, well, sub three hour to 320 is corral A. Now you really, if you're in group zero, the three hour finisher group, zero or 1A or 1B, the 310 or 320 finisher groups, you will get a special dispensation with Lucy, let her know, and you will be in Corral A. We'll get you a, a, a bib with Corral A on it. However, everyone who is a roadrunner, and this is a sort of perk for the roadrunners, and you need to understand this before we start, is anyone who is a roadrunner will get a bib that says Corral B. However, your, your pace leaders will not be in Corral B unless they're appropriately timed 3.30 to, I believe it's like four hours or something like that is Corral B. And then if you're in Corral C, D, E, or the open corrals, anything slower than five hours, you're in the open corral. 
Uh, so your pace leaders are going to be in the appropriate have, corrals, including the open they, they corrals, slow the, slower the than five hours. So what you so need to know is if you're an LA Roadrunner and you've got a corral B on your, your bib number, you can get into, and please tell this to anybody who has this question, you can get into any corral, any corral, B, C, D, or E, as long as you are an LA Roadrunner, you will get a corral B, bib, but you'll still be able to go to C, D, or E. Got it? So if your pace leader is not in B, don't panic. Oh my God, I have a B, bib. I can't be with my pace leader. I went, no, 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 no. Just go in that corral. You're good. B will get you into any other corral. Again, if your pace leader is slower than five hours, they will be in the open corral. And you, I recommend starting with the group, especially if you're not a seasoned LA marathoner. Um, and, and like I said, there's an awful lot to doing pacing the LA marathon that we'll talk about later in the season. But for the first time, you should know our Griffith Park group and our Newport Beach group are going to fill in. We never had 3.30 to 5 hour pacers in the open corrals. So we are going to keep in mind, we are the official pace teams for the entire LA Marathon. On LA Marathon Day and even the Rose Bowl half, we are not just pace leading you guys, we are pace leading you guys and everybody else in that race. Got it? So for the first time, we're gonna have dual pace leaders between the finish times of 3.30 and five hour. The three, there will be a 3.30 and five hour from our Santa Monica group. Those pace leaders will be in the closed corral. And from our Griffith Park and Newport Beach groups, they will be in the open corrals. And then, like I said, anyone slower than five hours will be in the open corrals. You guys can choose whatever you wanna do, except for corral A, unless you're, like I said, in groups zero, one is one A or one B. Now, let's get back into the serious stuff, the science of endurance athletics. Hey, uh, um, and then hopefully, by I the way, I know David can't hear mic, me right now, mic. but please mute your mic. Are you saying something? You are. Yes. Yes. Sorry. I know he can't hear me right now, but um, <laughs> can everybody please oh, mute going. their microphones? Hold on, uh... hold on, David. Hold on, wait, wait. <laughs> um, time out, time out, David. Um, please mute, mute your microphones. Um, hey, there's a heard. lot of chatter going on. And so uh, it's really hard to to hear what's going on. Um, I also did want to just let you know, um, I don't know uh, if David was expecting me to tell you guys this. Um, for those of you who are brand new, LA Marathon or LA Roadrunners uh, starts officially uh, next weekend, 23rd and 24th, but we have orientations this weekend in person in all three locations, Griffith Park, Newport Beach, and Santa Monica. Everybody meets at 7 a.m. in those locations. Check the newsletter for um, information. Um, and basically, we will train with the pace leaders and Coach David through uh, race day. That's 26 weeks. So I'm sorry. I don't know if David thought I said that before. <laughs> so I just wanted to make sure you guys heard that. Um, and again, please just do mute yourself um, so that uh, there's not a lot of chatter because since David, I'm going to give him the thumbs up that he can go ahead. And by the way, if people have membership questions afterwards, we can go through that later. With that, someone else's iPhone, whoever's iPhone, uh, please, can you hit mute? Thank you. Um, great, thank you. Good. There, can you hear us, David? Now I can hear it with my headset on. Fantastic. So, there Great. We go. Okay. I, David, I just went through a quick overview of what, uh, where the locations are. Uh, sure. And, um, and that way uh, everyone knows that, but I'll, I'll stay on for questions about membership. And David, can you make me a co host? Oh. That uh, way I can, I can mute people. Oh, Thanks, you guys. You know what? So this is like the fun, like outtakes, right? So the first first uh, online Zoom of the season, um, we'll we'll get it down together uh, by 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 March. We'll have this down down pat. So <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Um, I just made you a co-host. 
And, Great, thank you. Uh, so that means I can mute people. <laughs> oh, there you go. Um, here's a little deeper dive into the science and what you really want to look forward when you're choosing a pace group. And I'm going to get into some some quick and easy ways to figure it out. But this is a science. Um, I, you know, I refer to pace as a four letter word. I actually had a pace group, kid you not, for years, and it has now become the, the Griffith Park group. But um, I, pay, I coach them for about 18 years now. But for a couple of years early on, I did not allow the pace leaders to tell anybody. We had a small enough group, about 60, 80 people. I did not let, allow them to tell the people what pace they were pacing. They could tell them the time that they were total time they ran for, the total distance they went for, and people could kind of figure it out for themselves. But I really didn't want people to define themselves as a pace. And I know we have pace groups, we have pace signs that you'll you'll see when you're out there on on any any of these three groups. We have uh, pace uh, teams, uh, pace leaders, and there's so much revolving around pace. But that's really not the thing you want to focus on. Pace is probably the worst predictor of the LA Marathon. Yes, we can use pace as kind of a ratioed scale from time to time to see where we are, sort of, kind of. Um, but try and, and not label yourself, I am a 10-minute pace person, or I am a 12-minute or a 14-minute person. Um, and, and also that goes for runners, run walkers, and walkers. There are times when you're going up a hill, and you'll understand that after this little discussion, where you may, as a runner, benefit from walking up that hill. God, I know you're a runner and we're saying walk. No, uh, it's not about beating yourself up. That has nothing to do with the science of endurance athletics. We don't want to beat you up. We want to build you up. We start with two rules. And you'll hear me say this Saturday. We have two rules of endurance athletics. Rule number one is you need to have fun. Rule number two is if you're not living up to rule number one, or if you're not having fun, you need to find some way to fix that. If you're beating yourself up, um, that's not fun. So we need you to slow it down. And let me give you an overview of some of the science. There are three resources that generate ATP. And I think I'm missing, there it is, ATP adenosine triphosphate. Anybody have a clue what that is? That is actually the fuel that your body uses. I actually find this fascinating. The fuel your body uses, and I'll make it simple, essentially to move, right? Every time you're talking three phosphate molecules and bonded together, and when you move, one of those phosphate fate molecules will break away from the other two, causing an electron to fire out. Yes, indeed, you are actually a nuclear generator, and I am not kidding. Um, you fire, you break two uh, 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 molecules away from the third, or one away from the other two, and fire an electron. That electron forces your, and we'll get this a little later in the season, forces your muscles to open, and you're able to move, right? Um, so that's adenosine triphosphate. It is the fuel your body uses. Oh, if you were clear, if you had clear skin or opaque skin, whenever you moved, you would literally, you would glow in the dark. You would seriously glow in the dark because you heat your body up with this nuclear reaction of breaking these three phosphate molecules apart, right? The firing an electron that causes heat. That's why we heat up. Um, that's where we are warm creatures. But I always found it fascinating. No, it is not a science fiction thing. If you were clear or opaque skin, you really would glow in the dark. And it has nothing to do with nuclear radiation. It has to do with you are a nuclear reactor, for real. Um, so there are three resources predominantly that our body uses to create that ATP. 
I don't know why I get so passionate about ATP. It's, you know, who cares? But anyway, um, and this becomes critical to what you do in your training. And I'll explain why after that. Creatine phosphate, uh, glycogen, and fat and let's dive into each, each one. They go through what's called the, the fat and glycogen go through what's called the Krebs cycle and they create ATP. Um, the creatine phosphate is a whole different ball game. It calls, goes to the phosphagen system to create ATP. And you're gonna find out creatine phosphate is not something that we really train to benefit, um, but we do train fat and glycogen and I'm not even going to explain any more than that, but creatine phosphate, you have about seven seconds of creatine phosphate. I know here it says 10. You do have a couple seconds of stored up ATP at any given time. It's not like you're going to run out of this stuff. Um, so, but really you only have about seven seconds of eight of creatine phosphate. So this is something sprinters use. Um, this is something football players use. You'll note football plays are like seven seconds or very brief. It's like they're like sprinters. Um, so we really don't need to do sprinting because that would be training your your um, and and your a lactic system, which is the system that uses creatine phosphate. So we're stay below sprinting. Um, yeah, you might in recruit some faster muscles, but you're also really increasing risk of injury by sprinting. So we really don't do that. That's not affecting our training. And I want you to understand that. It's not about beating yourself up and going as fast as you can, because here's a prime example where you would then for seven seconds of sprinting, you would be benefiting an energy system that you really will never use. What is seven seconds on a marathon? worthless unless you're a pro athlete and you need to kick in your finish sprint in your finish after 26 miles we don't do that um so there we go um glycogen glycogen comes from carbohydrate um sprinters after seven seconds of of creatine phosphate they turn on glycogen consumption only and um, after a while in your 5K, 10K, when you're really breathing hard, you get to a point where you're anaerobic, meaning without oxygen, you need oxygen to utilize glycogen. Glycogen comes from carbohydrate, turns into blood sugar. Blood sugar is, becomes glycogen, um, also referred to as blood glucose, blood glucose, which turns into glycogen. Um, these are carbs. Uh, so when you're really, after a while, you're really breathing hard on that five or 10 K, um, you're using glycogen only. You've gone anaerobic. You're no longer using oxygen to utilize fat as a resource for fuel. It's your glycolic. Um, so midweek on your threshold runs on your, those are T pace on your interval runs. That's I pace or on your, your repetition runs. That's R pace. And those are, for example, our pace would be about 200 meters or halfway around the track, about an eighth of a mile to about half a mile. Interval pace, I pace would be about half a mile to a mile. Threshold pace would be a mile and beyond up to about 20 minutes or so. I do know we do have a 40 minute run at the very end of your schedule where you're pushing threshold T pace T pace and threshold pace, same same thing. It's just I couldn't fit in the word threshold, threshold in those little boxes on your schedules, so I used T pace. Um, so that that would be that would be high intensity. That's going to raise the bar where you're still using fat as a resource for fuel, and you're you're now not going to deplete your glycogen quite as fast. That's what those threshold runs, those interval runs, and repetition runs do. Um, glycogen will last you about 80, 90 minutes, a little faster than marathon race pace. So if you're going out a little too fast, 
or if you're going up that hill early on, and there are some big ones, you will find out in the first six miles of the LA Marathon, and you raise your heart rate a little too high, you got 80, 90 minutes. Now, no human on the face of the planet has ever run a 90-minute marathon. There's only one person that's broken two hours, and that was unofficially with an awful lot of artificial help. And that was only one person broke two hours. So be very, very understanding of glycogen consumption. And you only got a limited reservoir of that. And because it is a limited reservoir, we only do like 20% of our training where you're training your glycogen. Got it? Because it's not as important a resource. But if you run out of it, you hit the wall. You're, you're just, your body will slow you down and you're pretty much walking and a little jogging in between. But you, you, so you really want to hold on to glycogen and use those short, quick runs midweek to raise the bar on your speed, to raise the bar on where you're still using fat. Now, fat is, and I, I, for everybody, I don't care if you're the thinnest Kenyan on the planet, we all have far more of an abundant reservoir of fat than we do have glycogen. So most of our training is designed to utilize fat. Now understand, I did not once mention training at pace. I'm mentioning training to best facilitate the consumption of fat into ATP. Got it? Now, how do you do that? Well, glycogen is used at a slightly higher heart rate. Fat is consumed at a slightly lower heart rate. I, I have a graph that you'll see in weeks to come where fat, as your heart rate goes up and up and up and up and up, your fat consumption goes down and down and down and down and your glycogen consumption goes up and up and up and up and up until you're anaerobic. Like I say, like on those 5Ks, you're breathing really hard toward the end of a 10K and um, you're no longer using fat, which is by far a more abundant reservoir or resource for fuel. We also call um, uh, a, a, a um, oh God. Anyway, um, I, so, so we tr spend a lot of time training fat and that has nothing to do with pace. So when you're going up a hill, you want to keep a low heart rate because that's where we build endurance. Endurance is really a, a word we use to just generally mean you're going to become more efficient in utilizing fat. Now, there are physiological changes which occur at low heart rate where you're consuming more fat that give you greater efficiency. Well, what we also generally term endurance, right? And those are, and we'll go over them in weeks to come very briefly. There are lectures online already about this. Um, uh, more capillary veins and arteries, more mitochondria, more oxidative enzymes, making you far more efficient at utilizing fat, which give you greater endurance. Got the picture? Again, I'm not mentioning pace. Not at all. I'm saying I'm not mentioning pace is how I'm mentioning pace, which probably makes no sense. But um, you want to be able to talk fluidly. You want to be able to talk like I'm talking now. One of our three-hour pace leaders that will be in Santa Monica, a guy named Wally, you'll all meet. Um, three, so he does th sub three-hour marathons. And one day I was, this is years ago, I was talking to Wally on the phone and he evidently had one of those things in his ear while he was running, this is years ago. And we were talking for about 20 minutes and I started hearing cars honking and an ambulance. And I thought, I said, Wally, wh where are you? And he said, I'm running, you know, just like no big deal. Now this is a guy who does sub three hours on a marathon. He's qualified for Boston. He's done all, a huge list of things. And he was running at a level where I could not tell on the phone that he was running. And I listen for this kind of stuff all the time. That's where you want to be when your breathing rate, your breathing is indicative of your heart rate, but that's where you want to be when you're in a pace group. So if you choose a pace group, 
and they're a little you're breathing a little too hard which is meaning your heart rate is a little higher meaning you're using less fat you're building less endurance you're using more glycogen at a higher heart rate right you're not becoming as efficient as you could at the level you need to be um and i'm going to go into that more a breakdown of run run walk and walk in just a minute but we are all human if anyone there is not human, please let me know now, and I'll try and adjust accordingly as best as I can to your own physiology. But I do believe every single person in our training program is human. I don't care if you run or run walker or walker, we all have the same physiology. So that said, as strangely as I could crank it out, um, you want lower heart rate where you can hear your yourself you're talking fluidly. If you're not, if you're breathing a little harder, if you're talking like I'm talking like now, and I apologize, this is boring discussion, but um, you need to stop in the group that you're in, jump off one train and jump on the next train, you know, the next group that's coming along. And uh, we will start from faster all the way to, to walkers and our slowest walk group, which would be Jose and 710 walk group. Um, and even Joe will be there Saturday and, and uh, Rose in, in um, Newport Beach on Sunday. Joe is in Santa Monica. He'll, th those two do, like I said, sub eight hours. Anyway, they're slower than eight hours uh, and they will be there. Um, which is all good. Um, so that's how you choose a group from a physiological standpoint. Now, how do you kind of come close to figuring out what group that should be and then testing the waters to see, am I fluidly talking? Am I breathing comfortably? Am I just, this is, this is what, you know, in the schedule is called easy pace. Is this easy? Is it not that, oh, well, I can keep up with the group. No, 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 no. Then you're not getting the major benefits from aerobic training or fat burn consumption or endurance, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, being able to keep up with the group means your, your heart rate's a little higher. You want to slow it down. Now here's the difference. Oh, and, and on, on this little thing here, true to form, you know, if you're running a hundred miler, you know, hundred milers walk up hills. I don't care how fast they can do a marathon. They are way slower per mile. They're, they're walking up those mountains. They are not running up them. They are keeping their heart rate as low and saving that glycogen. You know, if you're going 24 hour race and you got 80 to 90 minutes of glycogen, you know, yeah, you can take in a ton of carbohydrates in the form of gels and sport drink and all, gummies and whatever you want. But, you, you know, even on a marathon, you got a long way to go save that glycogen um with, but uh it's a feeling you can kind of go on forever you know that's the group you want to be in not not the group that oh yeah i could keep up with them no that's too fast um you benefit from that slower group um i cannot emphasize that enough and okay um I'm going to talk about one last thing. Um, I, I threw up the screen with my emails on it and even my phone number. If you get lost, I will. That is my cell phone number. Um, you can write that down. You can call me wherever you are and and say, where, where are you? You know, where is our training group? Or I just fell down. I broke my leg and my pace leader is standing here and or or someone else hurt themselves we've never had a broken leg in the 20 years of my coaching I, i've never had anybody really go to i think we had one person go to the hospital in all the years i've been doing this who really just fell down and scratched her knee and um just needed to get bandaged up but that was that's it in long long years but um, so there you go. You can call me whatever. I will have my cell phone with me all the time on our training runs, run walks or walks. Now, this is the difference between uh, run, walk, run, and walk. Um, the run groups 
your range, you'll see these signs. Uh, oh, I have it on the table, but uh, anyway, you'll see these signs on Saturday in and Sunday in any group that you're in, Griffith Park, Santa Monica, Newport Beach. And they will have the, the finish time. They're anticipated this group will finish the LA Marathon at whatever it is, 3.30 or 5.30, 6.30, whatever it is. And then under that, it will have MRP, which is marathon race pace. The average pace for that finish time will be on the marathon will be that pace. Kind of meaningless to any of us right now. You know, if you're like a 12 minute per mile runner, you may even think twice about that. You, uh, look at the range of what it says below that. It'll say easy. And all of these groups will have a range of pace that, and it says easy for easy pace. That's what we do on most of what we do on Saturdays, not midweek all the time, not all of the Saturday workouts, but most of the Saturday workouts. In fact, most of what you do is that easy pace to work on fat consumption, aerobic work, gain all those capillary veins and arteries, mitochondria and oxidative enzymes, all that stuff. That's what we mostly work on. You gain a whole slew of other things in addition to working on just those things. So don't get me wrong. Um, you gain a lot. Um, uh, stroke rate, uh, enlarged lower left ventricle, stronger heart. Uh, you get a stronger uh, venous return. You got all these other things in addition that you get at any pace. So the question is, is well, why, you know, marathon race pace is still pretty low heart rate, generally aerobic. After a long period of time, yes, your heart rate goes higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. When you're on a really long run over a few hours, you know, if you start at marathon race pace, you can easily get out of um, aerobic levels into anaerobic levels where you're just utilizing glycogen. That's what happens at the end of a marathon. That's why because of dehydration and fatigue, your heart rate's going up and up and up and up. And you get to the end of a marathon and you're like, oh my God, my heart rate is pounding. I'm breathing hard and I'm going the same pace. What's going on here? It's dehydration and fatigue causes your heart rate to go higher and you're feeling the effects of higher heart rate. So we start at lower heart rate to stay lower the whole time. And okay. but on the other hand, we also gain the same things at easy pace as we do from marathon race pace. On the other hand, you gain the same stuff, physiological changes, neurological changes. You get the same benefits, but because you're going faster with marathon race pace, you don't get the same risk of injury. So less risk of injury, the same benefits as running marathon race pace. Who would want to run marathon race pace? Well, I'll tell you who. That range of easy for, for runner only groups, keep in mind when you go up a big hill, just walk it, it's about heart rate. It's not about average pace. I don't care about pace. Um, for years, people are coming out, look at my average pace. It's meaningless to me. I wanna know heart rate. I wanna know where you've been. Have you spiked your heart too high? Have you wasted your time going too fast up those hills with an, an elevated heart rate? Is it too warm a day for you to maintain the pace that you're normally accustomed to? Because with heat, hills and headwinds, your heart rate is going to be higher. We want you to slow down, lower your heart rate through those periods of heat, hills and headwinds. But that said, Runners have a range of easy that is about a minute to a minute and a half slower than their marathon race pace. That is faster. Got it? Run walkers, that range of easy pace now shifts to in between where your marathon race pace is. Got it? So you can actually go a little faster with run walk and then your marathon race pace and a little slower. And yes, run walk is not just about ratioed time. When again, when you're going up those hills, 
walk and walk more. It's not about the ratioed run to four to one, run to walk. It's not, don't do that. Don't do that on the LA marathon with a big hill. You will spike your glycogen levels. You will hit the wall. You will burn out. You will be having an awful day. It's okay to walk a little. We have pace. Um, when we get closer to LA, we have pace bands that Lucy made up and they are not steady pace. If you are a 10 minute per mile runner only, each mile normally would be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. No, 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 no. Um, the LA Marathon does not want you to do that. The LA Marathon, when there is a big hill, that 10 minute run can actually become a 12 minute uphill. Got it? Same with run walk. If you're a three one run walker, when you're on that big hill, we do not want you to be a three one run walker. Even in training, when we do a Malfi, forget the three one, just walk, listen to your breathing rate. If your pace leader is going a little bit too fast for you, most of the pace leaders, most not all, I apologize, most are chosen because their ability level is the same as the group that they are pacing. Because if I was going to pay somebody, which we all are, to pace lead me, I would want to know that that person feels what I feel. Got it? That's how we choose pace leaders. True. My, not all of them, not all, but most of them. So with that, uh, I'm just going to end it here. Uh, that, you know, there are some pace calculators. You can go online and find a V dot, V D O T, V dot pace calculator, which is not accurate and is not accurate certainly all the time, but it does kind of give you an idea if you have a fast, run, run, walk, or walk. It doesn't matter whether you're a run, run, walk, or walker. It just matters what is your time for a few miles or a few fractions of a mile or whatever data you have that you can feed into this tracker. You'll get a pretty good ballpark of where your easy pace is, and it'll show you training levels, your easy pace. It'll give you your marathon race pace, your marathon finish time, your half marathon finish time. It'll give you a kind of a ballpark of what group you would possibly do well in. VDOT, I recommend it, is totally free. You don't have to pay for anything. There is like a $10 fee if you want get, got to want to get rid of advertising pop-ups, but the pop-ups are very infrequent and it's really not worth paying the money. I don't. I do have it on my cell phone. You can see, um, I don't know if you can see this. There's a little right there, that V, that green V dot on a white background, you're looking at it back backward, but um, V dot calculator, um, you can look up that on any app store and you'll find green, the green V with the white background. There is one that's a paid for thing with a black V. Don't buy anything, there's no fee, it's all free and it's not perfect, but it'll give you kind of an idea. Um, train smart and train to win because if you don't you won't and if you do you just might win that is with that i thank you all for showing up tonight and i'm going to keep the thing recording and i'm going to uh, listen in to all of your questions but i do want to say i am excited to see all of you on saturday or sunday griffith park this week i will not be there but my team that I have coached for like 18 years will be, and the God knows they've had enough of me. They know me like the back of their hand. And yeah, when they hit a 20 foot hill, those run groups start slowing down and slowing down and they start walking. Um, the fastest groups, uh, they will run up that hill, but it's really, really slow. They probably could be walking. Um, and that's what I want to see with every single pace group that's out there, because you will be more efficient on race day. I cannot emphasize that enough. Um, easy pace is easy. That's the only thing I can say. And it's not about pace. Okay. And in fact, you may find, I had a girl, I'll tell you a story. I had a girl years ago, um, she ran with me when I was pace leading group five. 
here with the LA Roadrunners. That was a 9-10 LA Marathon, excuse me, a 4-10 LA Marathon finish time and 9.30 pace per mile. This is a long time ago. And she told me she had three kids. She's going to grad school and she just couldn't get in all the runs. And yes, the more volume you do, up to a point, the more volume you do, basically the more physiological changes you will adapt and the greater what we call the greater fitness you will you will have, right? The more volume you do. Um, she just couldn't keep up with the volume and she knew that she just couldn't keep up with the group because her physiology was just kind of declining a little bit, not what it was in the years past. She was not be able to build up to what it was before. So I said, I'll tell you what, I totally get it. You're going to grad school. I think it's a great thing. You have three kids. She gave me a picture of these wonderful, cute three little girls who are probably in their late 20s right now. Um, and I still, I swear to God, I still have that picture in a little scrapbook because I was so proud of her. Anyway, um, so I, I said, go back a couple groups this year and just do nothing but easy aerobic training, do nothing else. In the off season, do the same thing. When you come back next year, you're gonna have an extraordinary aerobic base from your off season and your entire season of just taking it slow, just taking it easy, just finishing the marathon way slower than you normally would have. And so um, she did this year later, I, several weeks went by and I didn't see her at all. And I finally, one day we got back to the base camp and I see her and she looks like she had gone home, taken a shower. Her hair was all combed and she was, she wasn't sweaty or anything. And I said to her, I said, what group are you running in? And she said, oh, um, I've been here every week. I, I, I'm, oh, for my first question was, have you been here every week? And she said, yeah, of course. And I said, what group are you running in? And she said, group two. And I said, group two, that back then was an eight minute per mile group. Ours was nine ten. You're running over a minute faster per mile than, excuse me, a minute and a half faster per mile a year later. And she said, yeah, it's easy. And that that's a very true story where running slower can actually get you faster. She finished the marathon with group two that year at about a 3.30 fin marathon finish instead of about a 9.10. So what is that? Uh, that's a lot faster. Um, at any rate, so there you have it. It is not about pace. It is about training, okay? Walkers, by the way, the range then shifts again and walkers will actually train faster than that what they will do on race day. But on race day, they're oftentimes out there way longer. But even the walk, even the faster than race pace walking training needs to be easy. The marathon race pace for walkers then needs to be easier than your training. It's not that you're beating yourself up as walkers on training. It's that it's easy in training and then marathon comes around and it's even easier for walkers. So pick a group that's easy. Got it for Saturday. Or like I say, stop, wait for the next group, dive in. And I thank you. I will see you all on Saturday and then eventually at the finish line. And I thank you very much for chiming in on now. I have uh, anyone have any questions, you can slide your, your scroll, your cursor across the screen like I'm doing with mine now. And a little um, command bar will open up on the bottom or the top and you can click on chat and type something in or you can unmute yourself and just say something. Uh, I'm gonna go to our chat box and you should add, Orly said you should add humidity to heat hill, hills and headwinds, especially for some of us with asthma. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, humidity, I, I equate humidity with heat. 
Um, but yeah, for those of you who have asthma, uh, especially on a really humid day, that that you need to do a better warm up, like do some walking in advance of your training if you have asthma, um, to just slowly build up and slowly open the lungs rather than just kind of dive into a track workout or a Saturday morning or Sunday morning longer run. Um, Jessica, a great question. Can you alternate between locations? Not only can you alternate between locations, but early season, I don't recommend this for later in the season. I do know one of our pace leaders who's down in Newport Beach, he's going to show up on Saturdays in Santa Monica, and he's going to run with us in Long Beach as a pace leader, excuse me, in Newport Beach. So you could do the same thing. You know, this Saturday, we're doing two minute miles in all locations. You could run in Griffith Park and then on Saturday and then in Newport Beach on Sunday. And then the following weekend, you could run in Santa Monica and Newport Beach. We're doing three miles each Saturday, Sunday. Um, you can do whatever you want. Um, the, the more, the merrier. Uh, my attitude is the bigger the crowd, the more people will be excited and the more people we will get to join. So um, I do not recommend later in the season when we're doing, you know, two 20 milers, one on Saturday, one on Sunday. Um, no, don't do that. But that is nothing to, you could if you, you wanted to, but physically don't do that. Don't do that. Um, Jessica, thank you. Thank you for asking your question. Ella, my friends and I are already in the middle of training on our own for a different half marathon. Good. In November, uh, we still want to join. How do we adjust our mileage? Great work. Great suggestion. Uh, question. Um, November half marathon. I'm trying to think what is in November that's a half marathon. The Malibu half marathon. Is that the one, Ella, that you guys are doing? Malibu? Monterey. Oh, another great, a great half. Beautiful area, um, Monterey. Um, Malibu is also in November. We will be pay we will actually be the official pace leaders for the Malibu half, but that's a whole other story. Um, basically, what I, I would highly recommend is if you want to take one of our schedules because that will benefit you, schedule one through five, change the dates. You'll see the Rose Bowl half marathon on one of our schedules, obviously a half marathon. Build up to that. And then do like the taper week that's on our schedule, but our taper week and our buildup to um, Rose Bowl half would be in January. Yours is obviously November. So just change all the dates. Then you have a taper week after your Monterey Bay or, or Malibu or whatever in November half marathon. You have a taper week on our schedule and then back it up to the right date that's on our schedule. So one week taper after, and there is a one week taper on our schedules after the Rose Bowl half. So do that taper on that appropriate schedule for you. And then after the week of taper, after your race, so a week after your race, then change the dates on your schedule starting Monday, a week after your race, and a week after that taper week, and then dive in on our schedule that's appropriate for you, one through five schedules, um, and, and then start in again. So your volume overall will probably be way less, and you're starting to build again. And that works. You, you've had a little week of taper, and, uh, the, and that actually from a half marathon. Now, a marathon, I would suggest something a little different. A marathon, I'd say you really do benefit from taking two weeks of zero after a marathon because you're breaking up way more muscle tissue. It's taking a few days to just get back to, you know, not feeling soreness, but it, it can take up to three to four weeks to fully repair all those sub microscopic micro tears that you don't even feel that that you have of these billions and billions and billions of filaments that make up the big muscle in your legs, you know, that tend to break these, these single strands of beads of molecules of protein. Um, that's how small they are. Single beads of protein molecules make up these little filaments. 
um, and they break. Big deal. That's what happens. Bodybuilders break them. They come back stronger. It's it's a part of being human. Um, but uh, marathon, more extreme taper um, than a half marathon. Um, but then you can just jump back into it on the appropriate date and you're good to go. Uh, Jay, do I miss anything if I can't join this Saturday morning event? Um, no, because you can get the next lecture online. Um, most of the lecture today, then you're going to get, you're getting tonight, sort of. So um, I really wanted to roll out some of this stuff because people find it difficult to focus when they're in, in a big group of people. Um, but you'll miss meeting your pace leaders, which you can do the week after. And um, you'll miss a two mile run at easy pace. So you may wanna just test the waters and do two miles on Saturday or on Sunday on your own. Um, I have eight more messages coming up. So I, I can't say you're gonna miss much. Oh, you will miss getting your t-shirt if you didn't already get it at the Santa Monica Classic on the pier. Um, but we will have t-shirts thanks to Lucy who got me barrels of t-shirts and Orly who is bringing them. Thank you, Orly and Lucy. Um, we will have them this Saturday, the Saturday after that, and the Saturday after that. And then we'll have the t-shirt give outs like once a month when we have bigger meetups. Um, uh, so there you go. You miss getting your new t-shirt and a two mile run. And this lecture again, sort of, no, not really. Um, this week is just a way to get acquainted. You'll be fine if you miss it. Oh, Lucy, thank you for that, that comment. Uh, Anna, do I start my training on Tuesday instead of Monday if I join New Park Group on Sunday? Um, Anna, yeah, you know, uh, that's going to be part of my lecture for the Newport Beach Group. Keep in mind, none of our groups start on the schedule until Monday, this coming Monday, after this weekend. This weekend is really kind of an orientation. Do I fit with this group and my ability? Do I fit with that group? You know, that kind of thing. Do I, Can I get my t-shirt all at? Um, on, on Newport Beach, um, we're going to flip what's on the schedule on Saturdays with Sundays. And yeah, if you're a little sore on Monday, you could easily flip <laughs> Monday and Tuesday and then Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, depending on the schedule you're on, I'll go into that a little more on Sunday when I see you guys in Newport Beach, because you guys are are alternating that all of the schedules that we already have online. And it's pretty simple stuff. You just flip it. So yeah. And also anybody else, the one good thing with these, you don't really want two speed workouts in a row. Not all of our work, all of our schedules have two speed workouts in a week. Um, uh, but if you do have two speed workouts in a week, a single week, you don't want them back to back because you don't want to be fatigued the next day when you have another speed workout. Um, just flip it around. If you can't make a run, uh, and you got a day off somewhere on your schedule, which y'all do, um, take that day that you can't run or run, walk or walk and do that day as your day off and just flip it. You know, the, the, take the day off and what you're supposed to do on the day on, do that on the day off, unless it puts you within, like I say, uh, two hard workouts, two fast workouts in a row or a fast workout and a long workout in a row. Then you can kind of move things around a little. Um, and let's see, do I start my training? Uh, yeah, good. And... Miranda, what if I run a natural pace that's real already pretty slow, but I add a minute to pace to keep heart rate low? Should I join a pace group that is more of a walking group? What is the slowest pace that's still considered jogging instead of walking? Keep in mind, we also have like five run walk groups in between run only and walking. We have about 25 pace groups, I think last time I counted them. Um, not 10. I'm not even sure how many run groups off the top of my, we have about 25 total. Anyway, um, five run walk and five walk. So that leaves, what is that? 15 run only groups. Anyway, um, 
Uh, yeah, it, you'll see it on the signs. There are some crossovers between run, walk, and run, and walk, and run, walk, and whatever. Um, uh, take a look and, and see what the next uh, the next slower group would be that might put you in a in a range where you're appropriate. Now, keep in mind, you know, the cool thing is if you're training appropriately and you don't train with your goal pace now, you may want to do a four-hour marathon. And right now, you're like a four five-hour marathoner or a, or a 440 marathoner. I've had people do that. A lot of them go that big a jump. Um, you want to start where you're at now in your ability. You don't want to start at your goal pace, at that four-hour pace. You want to start at that five-hour pace. So um, you will you will grow faster and consider those taper weeks where you want to test the waters and go with a faster group. Um, that's how you're slowly going to get there. Is as your, your fitness increases, as you're doing more and more and more at a low heart rate, becoming more and more efficient, gaining more and more endurance, you're moving up. That's what it's all about. More speed work, more low heart rate. That's what it's all about. And just look at the signs every Saturday or Sunday, and you can adjust each week, you know? Um, and that's another thing, why we want you to change, be able to change groups. You may, a lot of you, especially beginners, um, no question, um, if you're a couch potato, you're going to climb, you're going to go to faster groups. There's no question whatsoever. Um, if you're somebody that's like totally new to running or run walking or walking. And by the way, walking is an extraordinary um, uh, exercise for fitness and even racing. Uh, highly underrated, great, great exercise, walking. Um, so yeah, would you maybe start in a walking group? Maybe, all depends. Um, and then maybe jump to a run walk group or whatever. Um, so they're so excited for the new LAR training season. Thanks coach David and thanks Lucy. See you Saturday, Cynthia. Thank you so much for that note. I appreciate that. I know Lucy does too. Maria, I am brand new to this. Will there be talks about nutrition, proper hydration, proper shoe fit? Um, it's already all online, believe it or not. And yes, we will be doing little quickie five minutes on Thursday night and allowing you to ask questions about all that stuff. But believe it or not, we will be cranking out those links to that stuff that's already online. There is a, an, a lecture all on nutrition for race during the race, before the race. There's a lecture on proper hydration during the race, all of that stuff. Uh, I'm trying to think about proper shoe fit. I don't know that we really have a lecture on that. That's something where you really would benefit. Um, we do have a discussion on injuries and one of the elements of that would be proper shoe fit. But um, I, I, I highly recommend the, that's such an individual thing, you know, um, you know, a shoe that I would wear might cause somebody to be injured and vice versa. You know, for me, I might get injured in a shoe that you might find, oh God, this is the best shoe on the planet. I might get injured in it. Um, so I highly recommend if there's a real trial and error to this thing of shoes trying on. And usually the best way to do that, if you don't already know, yeah, I've had this shoe. I've had these shoes, uh, Gel Nimbus by Asics, another lame uh, pitch for our sponsor at Asics, which we love. And I... That's like a five-year shoe I'm still wearing. I really was an Asics person for years and years and years, a Nimbus person. Um, but I do recommend going to, and I would go online and buy that shoe because I know for years and years I've you know gotten that shoe. Uh, but if you're really new to it, go to a shoe store, try on a bunch of shoes. They'll let you go for a quickie run outside the front of the store and test the waters with that shoe. That's really the best way to do shoe fit. Um, David, I wish I had a better answer. Yeah, Lucy. David, can I can I put in a plug here for our meetup? Uh, our meetups at Dodger Stadium, where Asics comes out, and they will actually have uh, some shoe demos, which you know doesn't necessarily those those meetups are December going to be December sixteenth and March second, both Saturdays. We do a meetup at Dodger Stadium where 
We have like a little mini event. We have uh, ASICS comes and does shoe demos. We have Evolution PT comes out. Um, we try to get massage uh, massage tables. Electrolyte comes out over easy. We have a whole bunch of uh, of our partners, um, but that's a, another way to uh, to test out some shoes. And actually, a lot of running stores will have shoe demos. Different uh, shoe companies come in, like Brooks or Asics or whoever, um, and they'll do a demo. And so you can actually try out a pair of shoes on one of their runs. There you go. Lucy, thank you very much for that. And actually, I just wrote those dates down for the problem. Uh, anyway. Um, and yeah, I, I, one thing I should say is Saturday morning, this Saturday morning, I'm going to do about it. And in Newport Beach on Sunday, I'm going to do about a 10 minute talk. Um, some of the same stuff I just covered tonight. I apologize. But I'm not doing that every week. We're not starting out listening to a boring lecture by me every Saturday morning, We're especially when it's it, it, we, we got like all those people that really want to get going and they're chatting away. And uh, we're going to get out the door pretty quick. And if you have a question, by all means, especially when we all get back, um, please ask me in person. Um, and we'll, we'll, we will have afterward, we'll have things like gated video gate analysis, stop freeze frame, where all you guys will be able to like look at your running form or walking form. And uh, anyway, but we're not going to have long discussions at all. Um, most talks announcements will be during our warm up even. So we don't waste time listening to me and all that. Um, Ella got it. Thank you. Oh, Ella, thank you. Good. Alyssa, if you're a member of LAR, do you get perks for the Rose Bowl half marathon too, or just the LA marathon perks? Wow. You know, Alyssa, I love that question because I got to tell you, in my opinion, and Lucy, maybe you'll agree with me. Um, in my opinion, the best perk for the LA Roadrunners, aside from training, you know, but um, and there are people that actually spend the money to become LA Roadrunners who do no training with us at all, just to get this one perk. And what it is, and I think it's the coolest perk of all the perks. Um, we are underground, under the Rose Bowl, in the locker room. You know, there's like a, um, a home team locker room and an away team locker room or whatever it is. And we're in one of the two giant locker rooms under the Rose Bowl with these little wooden cubby holes that you can put stuff into. And we actually have real bathrooms with porcelain toilets and nice tile floors. And, you know, you don't have the, the line out the back for the porta body. Um, it's really, it's carpeted floor. You can leave your stuff in there. The Rose Bowl finishes on the field of the Rose Bowl football field, right? And then you kind of walk around the football field, you get your food and whatever, and you go right past, for us, you go right into the locker room again. And then everybody else just goes past that entryway out of the stadium. Right. But you could go right back in the locker room and get all your stuff, whatever it was. If it was raining outside, you miss the rain and then you go in and get your raincoat for going to your car. It's an amazing perk. And we get that. And, yeah, we do get into Dodger Stadium, the L.A. Marathon race day. Um, and I, I think but that's I think for me, the best perk is is the Rose Bowl half. Lucy, I see you nodding. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. For some reason, the Rose Bowl is like one of those locations that's always cold in the morning and no matter what time of year. And so having the the inside uh, locker rooms with flushing toilets as opposed to porta potties is number one. There you heard it. Porta potties with porcelain toilets. Number one. I agree. Uh, thank you, Coach. This is Carl. Thank you, Coach David and Lucy. Looking forward to fun 26 weeks. I'm really looking forward to seeing everybody. Um, the, the, the crowd that's been with us and the new people uh, that I'm meeting, starting to meet. Uh, I'm excited for the weekend. It's going to be awesome. Glad to have you with us. Lucy said that. Oh, in response to Carl. Great. Thank you. Uh, Bertina, I have to go, but wanted to let you know, coaches, very informative meeting. Bertina, thanks for hanging in there. 
and no problem uh, with jumping on or off whenever. Um, each week, if you have a question and you can't make it right at the start, we're going to do more question and answers the whole time each Thursday night. That'll be your time to just jump on and ask a question like you're doing now. Are there any issues, Patrick, uh, if I can't make Saturday run, even if I can't still put in the miles? Well, like I said, Patrick, you know, the greater volume that you do all week and all season will increase your fitness levels. So if you miss a long run, what you might consider doing, which would almost be about as efficient in general, though you don't want to do that all the time, but say you miss like a 10 mile run or even a 20 mile run, take that 10 miles, divide it by, what is it, four, you got about two and a half miles each. Take those two and a half miles, you have four runs midweek, add two and a half miles to each of those four runs midweek. There's your 10 miles that you missed on the weekend. And that could sort of do it because you've just added your volume, meaning you're adding to your fitness on what you missed. Be careful if you're starting to get sore and not doing too much, not adding too much to any given run, run, walk, or walk. Um, we were all the same in this. Um, but if you're not getting really sore, you're okay. Then you can add the two and a half to the next, the next workout. Um, that kind of thing could be a solution. Of course, you can always do, you know, that Saturday run on Sunday, or if you're in Newport Beach, the Sunday run on Saturday, if you really can't make it. Um, or you could even go to a different location on, you know, Newport Beach can come to Santa Monica, Santa Monica, Newport, whatever. Um, so hopefully that kind of answers that. Um, good. And yeah, you, you could certainly train on your own. Like I said, our only rule is that you have fun. That is, I swear, that is our only real rule. Um, and if you're not having fun, well, let's figure out a way to fix it. Alan J. Hey, Alan is one of our ambassadors and also one of our pace leaders in Newport Beach. We're lucky to have him. Good night. And thank you, Coach David, Lucy, and all our LA Roadrunner, uh, LA Roadrunners. Have a blessed night. Aloha. Alan, I, I don't know if you're still on, but thank you so much. I'll see you Sunday. I'm excited. Um, Lucy, uh, just put it, putting this out there. If you have membership questions, feel free to reach out to me at LARR at McCourtFoundation.org, not com, but org for organization. L-A-R-R -R for LA Roadrunners at McCourtFoundation.org, all one word, no spaces. Uh, Naven, do you recommend strength training during marathon prep? If so, do you recommend hitting legs on easy days, run days, speed workout days, or rest days? There are, that's a broad question, but a great question. The broad answer across the board is the more you strength train, the less risk of injury within reason. Now, when you're strength training, obviously you're breaking up those little tiny microscopic filaments. And in doing so, if you're getting sore, that means you've broken up a lot of them. Be very careful if your next run is a speed workout or a long run. So listen to your body. If you're sore, yeah, you've done a little too much. You've pushed a little too much weight. You've done few, maybe a few too many repetitions. But in general, um, that's where maybe strength training could get you into trouble if your next run is speed or long, because um, you're going to be breaking up more muscle tissue. And if you're bringing up more, 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 you know, suddenly you're going to start feeling pain. Pain means injury. You know, soreness means yeah, you're OK, but you've broken up a lot of filaments pain means you've broken up way more. Now that is turned into what we call an injury. Got it? That's the difference between achiness and pain, um, between non-injury and injury. It's just it's graduation into injury, right? Uh, uh, we'll, we'll talk more about that another time. But um, yeah, be, be careful. Early season when we have low volume, obviously this is great. You know, three times a week strength training, uh, I will, I will need personally, I need to strength train right up to the, the week of the marathon, but I won't strength train from Wednesday to the marathon. 
I'll maybe do a strength training. I'll move it to like Tuesday or Wednesday morning, the latest before the marathon. You may not want to strength train. If you're a big, strong, muscle, muscular guy, you may not want to strength train all the way up to the marathon. You, and especially you may want to lose some upper body muscle weight just to get rid of some upper body weight, right? So, so strength training, if you're already really strong, you may not want to strength train your 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 chest, your back, whatever. Um, but um, you do benefit from strength training all over. Let's face it, when you run, your elbow is kind of at a locked position. That means your bicep is actually holding up your forearm the whole entire marathon that you're running. Got it? So you can even strength train for that bicep to hold up that forearm. So your entire body comes into play throughout the motion of run, run, walk, or walk. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Especially early season, you may need to taper down. Listen to your body. You may need to taper down less strength training as you build more and more uh, 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 volume of run, run, walk, or walk, but see how you feel and come talk to me as you go along. Um, like I say, um, strength training will, will help bulletproof you from injury. It's, it's so important for everybody, your core, your legs, your back, everything. Maria, thank you. I thank you. Um, T work is the the handle sorry if, if this was already explained but i am unclear about wednesday track night oh no good question uh it was not explained um at sam ohi is there a general start time to meet or is that independent and if so what is the general time we do by the way have speed work built into your schedules and it's all about timed work you don't need to go to a track to do it you just need to have a wristwatch and not even a smart wristwatch. You can have a really, really stupid wristwatch. It's just about time. But um, the LA Running Club has been sponsoring a, uh, they, they were a breakout from the LA Roadrunners originally. A bunch of us pace leaders started the LA Running Club. And they took over from the original coach, Coach Pat Connolly, some 25 years 20 years ago, they took over. He had been doing it for nine and a half years with his retirement. So um, there are now leggers there. There are now tri-clubbers there. There are now uh, LA Roadrunners there. And um, you'll see a lot of people from all these different clubs. Wednesday night track, I have been there for a long time coaching. I love doing it. We meet at 6.30 every Wednesday night and uh, come out and join us just show up, bring some water and a warm jacket. Um, and you put it, we meet at the flagpole. There's only one flagpole by the track. It's off of fourth street and off the corner of Pico. You can't get on the track on Pico, but you can on fourth street. You can park for free in the neighborhood over there. Um, there is a way, ask me when you get there, there is a free other place to park right close to the track, but uh, tough to explain. Uh, but go down 4th Street south of Pico and park in that residential area, then run back up 4th Street and you can enter on 4th Street at the other end of the track from Pico. Um, you'll see a little wall there. Anyway, David, um, David, I was also just sorry, can I just interrupt you? I was sure. going to say there, there's a parking structure right there that's mm -hmm. really inexpensive. And so it's super easy. Mm -hmm. You don't have to drive around looking for parking. It's just a few dollars uh, at that that's time. True. Of so That's if true. you don't mind paying just a few dollars, it takes some of the stress out of it. That's true. It's right across the street from the entry. There, there's a long entryway into the into the 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 track. And it's a great workout. Um, just ignore your speed workout on your schedule if you're doing Wednesday night track um, at 6:30 Wednesday night, Santa Monica High School if you're nearby. Thank you, Coach David Alana uh, and Lucy. Great info. Thank you, Alana. Um, Michael, thank you, David, Laura, Lucy, and Worley. I'm looking forward to training LARR and 2024 LA Marathon season, Michael. And yeah, we are at the 39th LA Marathon. We will be in March. Orly, I'm not even going to repeat this. She wrote, go Bruins. I'm not going there. Um, 
I, yeah, okay. I was not a USC. Uh, oh, wait, Bruins or are, are, are UCLA. Uh, yeah, okay. Anyway, uh, Annie, excited to embark on this journey. And by the way, Orly is one of our, our coordinators for the Santa Monica group. So we owe a huge debt of gratification for Orly um, for bringing out our t-shirts this weekend, among many, many other things. Thank you, Orly. We will not discuss UCLA. Um, uh, Annie, excited to embark on this journey with, with all you. Thanks, coaches. Uh, Annie, we are just as excited, and I've been doing this for 20-something years. Um, I kid you not. Um, and yeah, it is a journey. It really is. Um, Lucy, training plans can be found on, um, go to www.mccourtfoundation.org um, uh, slash pages slash LARR training plans. And uh, yeah, just lamarathon.com and then click on athletes and um, LA Roadrunners and then click on training plans. And oh, Lucy, thank you for posting them. Lucy was in charge, was the one who created the, the mock up that went online and made them look pretty and formatted them and made them go online. I, uh, so thank you, Lucy, for doing that. Uh, Orly, we are, we're talking about the Rose Bowl. Okay, um, Orly is blushing. Anyway, uh, that's what she wrote. Um, Genevieve, uh, oh, you, you also added the link for the training plans. Thank you for adding that. And I think I have gotten through all of the chat questions for this evening. Does anybody have any more chat questions or verbal questions? Anybody at all? Oh. My wife just walked in the door and said, how far are we running on Saturday or Sunday if you're in Newport Beach? The answer is two miles at easy pace. Can you do that? You, you think you can make it? Two miles, you sure? Yeah, okay. There you go. All um, right. Uh, good. Any other questions typed in or verbal? Well, I thank you for all of that. Lucy, anything else? Uh, no, I was just going to say we will have shirts, member shirts this weekend, uh, next weekend, and through <clears throat> September. Um, then after that, we will only have them on taper days because otherwise it just is too difficult to manage the shirts every week. Um, and then we'll have them at the meetups that I mentioned at Dodger Stadium. Um, so, but hopefully everyone can get their shirt in the next couple of weeks because uh, we don't want to run out of sizes. So make sure you get your shirt as early as possible. Great. Thanks. Um, Michelle says thank you. And I say thank you, Michelle. Um, with that, yeah. Um, we are going to turn off our recording. I am. I will actually right now, once it downloads, I will upload it to Facebook. And so all these people on Facebook are now listening to me saying, I'm going to upload it on Facebook, which makes no sense at all. So I am going to say thank you all for chiming in. We were up to like 85 people earlier, and uh, which is kind of extraordinary. And uh, I'm going to stop our recording and say thank you all. And good night. If anyone has any personal questions, just stay online. But our recording is ending. And thank you.